In today's episode, I spoke with Ross Simmons about AI marketing, content distribution, and AI deepfake videos. If you don't know Ross, he's the CEO of Foundation, which is a content marketing agency that specifically helps companies create and distribute marketing content. He's also the world's top voice on content distribution. So he's uniquely qualified to help us out here and talk about AI today. Let's dive right in. First and foremost, to awesome. kind of level set, um, I just want to know your current viewpoint of like the state of AI in marketing right now. What do you think is working? What's not working? Yeah, so the state of AI is something that will be debated and argued by many marketers. But I think for me, I believe it's truly undeniable that it's having an impact. Um, and within content marketing, there's a lot of different facets, right? Like it's easy to think of content marketing and immediately just think blogging. There's no question that AI has had an impact on blogging and content creation as it relates to the written word. These tools that have been influencing the way in which you can create content with AI have been around for one to two years plus now, and there's no question that they've shaken things up. And there's results that are happening because of it. Um, as somebody who runs a content marketing agency, it would be wild for me to say, yes, there's no question that AI is replacing writers, but in reality, it is like content writers who are mediocre or poor can 100% be replaced today using AI if you know how to navigate a good prompt and you can navigate and edit and have a simple checklist around the things that you need to do to optimize a piece to make it double lead optimized and make sure that it can rank in Google. There's no question about it. Um, we've completely shifted and changed the way that we create content at Foundation. We're able to increase our velocity for clients, for partners. Um, we're able to produce more content and longer form content for a fraction of the rate that we used to. And it's been a great win for them. Um, and we're seeing amazing results. Now, what a lot of people aren't talking about is the fact that AI isn't limited to just written word. I believe truly that when you look at visual elements within content marketing, just the same as you look at the written word, it's all going to get shook up. Um, Mid Journey specifically stands out from a um, photography and static image lens that like there's no question that you can use Mid Journey today to get graphics on almost anything. Um, I went to Mid Journey and I asked for an apple pie and I got a picture of an apple pie, put it up on LinkedIn. I asked people to try to pick which one is the right apple pie. Everybody was hungry during their lunch break after scrolling through and seeing apple pie. But at the same time, only 50% of people were able to identify which one was a real apple pie and which one was created by AI. And I think this is going to have another massive impact on the marketing creation um, lens because now instead of me hiring a designer, instead of me using a stock photo site, I can go to Midjourney. And if I know how to write a good prompt and I know how to articulate the brand, the voice, the aesthetic, the, the way that I want it to look, I can get pretty much anything that I can imagine back. And I own the copyright. I own that asset and I can do with it whatever I want. Um, we've been producing pieces and have used Mid Journey to actually develop the stock footage and the content takes off. Like people love it. It gets shared. No one says, oh, this is a Mid Journey image, blah, blah, blah. They're not commenting on fingers being crooked anymore. Like none of that is still happening. So you combine that with the written word and there's no question the shifts and changes are happening. There's also tools like Runway ML, which is a video um, AI tool where I have literally taking myself and um, have been able to kind of recreate videos of myself talking on screen, just like I would on Twitter, on LinkedIn, on Reels, on any of these assets. And use another tool called DID um, where I can upload a snippet of my voice and it will sound exactly like me. I had to upload like 30 minutes of sound and it was able to get pretty close. It doesn't pick up all the Canadian accent, but it gets close and it doesn't have all my oats and aboats and stuff like that, but it, it gets most of it and I don't have to do anything. I can just upload a script that can be written by AI. I can upload a blog post from my website and it will articulate it, it will use my face, it's essentially a deep fake for me. So long story, getting very longer, um, I think it's all going to change. I think marketing as a industry, as a space is going to fundamentally change because of these tools and anyone who continues to sleep on it are making a major, major mistake. Um, we're going to be continuing to invest in it as a company, 
Personally, I'm a big believer in the tools, the technologies, um, both from a personal, but also a professional lens. And I don't think it's going anywhere anytime soon. I, I definitely want to come back to the I, one question I want to ask you is about that video experiment that you did. Yeah, let's let's get to that in just a minute, because I, I want to kind of take a holistic view at how you're actually using yeah. some of these tools when you're looking at for foundation specifically, you're yeah. you're doing content. So in theory, yeah. you could feel threatened by this, but you've said that you, you feel like it's just a tool to accelerate what you're doing. Um, 100%. There, there's kind of two paths, right? You can accelerate the quantity or the quality of what you're doing. It's kind of hard to do both at the exact same time. It's hard, but I think it's key. That's the interesting thing. I think that's where the differentiation comes from. I do think it's ridiculously hard to accelerate quality and quantity. But if you can do both, that's where I believe the biggest opportunity is. It's not easy. It's a, a lot of pain. You do have to still involve human touch. The rate in rapid speed is not the same as others. But I think that's where that's where I'm willing to bet my go all in on is like, how can we be fast, but how can we still maintain a bar of excellence that we believe is going to create content that fundamentally changes the way that people view a certain thing within their industry? It's not easy, um, but we've gotten wins on the board with that approach by saying, we need to maintain our bar of quality of excellence for content. We need to do it faster than we did before, but we need to always set this bar and it's tough, but we've been able to do it. So sorry to jump in there, but I, I do think it's key to try to find a way to actually do both. For sure. Do you have examples of how you're kind of using AI tools in your workflows currently? Yeah, a hundred percent. So the way that we think about it is the old way of creating content was you have a content brief, once you have that content brief, typically you have a strategist who's going to identify, okay, these are the um, keywords they could use a tool like phrase or content harmony, et cetera, to kind of do some analysis in the SERP to say, all right, these are the headlines we need to make up. And that's all through their AI and their technology, et cetera. And then from there, you pass it off to a writer. The writer then combines the brief with the um, tone of voice documents, et cetera. And then they write a great piece. That piece then goes to an editor who's been obsessed with this brand for the last few months. That editor redlines it, makes edits, makes changes, et cetera, goes off to a designer. Designer starts to incorporate images where it's appropriate. It all comes back together, goes to client, and then it goes live on the website. That's the typical content production flow pre-AI, let's say. For us today, um, we still believe that the insight needs to come from the strategist unless we're taking research and then putting it into a solution that can give us some recommendations. But typically we're still providing insight around, okay, these are the assets that we should create. Then we go to the brief, AI supports that wholeheartedly. So AI identify for us based off of this information coming from phrase, coming from content harmony, et cetera, what should our final asset be in terms of the framework? The framework comes to life. All right, AI tool, fill in the blanks, go straight from top to bottom, fill in the blanks with all of these different things. Now it goes to the writer who has a strategic understanding of the space, go in and optimize it. But when you optimize this content, you're going through a checklist that we've already pre-developed with about 18 or 20 different things that we require for every single asset. That's a manual element within the process. They already have what I would say is a good piece. The prompts that they would have used to get to that final piece with their AI tool gets them to a decent deliverable. But it's in this moment where they have our checklist of the things that we require to make a piece go from good to great, that they take that piece to the next level. Once it gets to that next level, designer comes in, designer now would use mid journey, brings in some cool visuals, sends that off to the client, goes live. We did this for a piece on foundation site. It's um, a SaaS pricing guide. So we wrote a SaaS pricing guide with complete AI, 100%, except we had that elevation step in it where we had the writer like elevate the content. That piece got tons of traction. It drove three leads. It got refeatured on IndieHackers.com, had over 50 some comments, people reaching out saying, this was the most comprehensive SaaS pricing guide that I've ever read. Thank you so much. Tons and tons of positive feedback with an AI driven piece that probably took a total of, I'd say five hours to create. 5,000 in some words, but completely just resonated with the audience and the people that we wanted to work with. Another part of what you're great at is the the other side of this process. You've talked about creation. You're really in the weeds on distribution and kind of like the over the, the overall voice of, of that topic, I guess you'd right. say. Um, 
Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's safe to say that, but given that, Appreciate it. how do you think through using AI for distribution then? If you've got this piece of content, like what's what's AI making easier now? Because yeah. I've gone through your old checklist a million times where it's like, here's every channel that's ever existed. Here's all the things you can do. Yeah. What does AI replace in that checklist? Blake, I have to update everything. I have to update everything now. Like AI is replacing so many things and it's it's good, scary for many, but like, I think it's good. Um, when it comes to AI, now you can actually take a transcription from a podcast. You can upload the audio to a website. That website can listen to the audio, identify the words that are being said, put together exactly what's being said, write literally the podcast notes for that podcast. It can actually write the tweets to promote it. It can identify the key moments within the podcast that should be chopped up and then repurposed and repackaged. It can then listen to the chopped up section and then identify, this is the tweet that should promote this. This is the LinkedIn update that should promote it. All of these things can be done now with AI. So for me, I'm excited because no one can continue down the path of saying, I don't have the time to do distribution because now it's easier than ever. It's easier than ever to say to even ChatGPT, if you upgrade yourself to the most recent, I think it's ChatGPT4, um, and you download Link Reader, the plugin, you can upload a blog post link and say, read this blog post and write me 10 tweets that sound like Blake or sound like Ross about this article. And it will look at the content and it will write tweets promoting that article and then you can share it. Like it's no longer an excuse. So what I think is really an amazing and interesting opportunity and um, is something that I think more brands need to be embracing is the power of AI to get more out of the content that you create. If you are investing a ton of time and energy in creating high value content, content that can fundamentally change the trajectory of someone in your industry's career, content that can shape culture, take those assets and then use AI to find ways to distribute them. There is a ton of questions on Quora that are left unanswered because nobody took the time to take a piece that they've already created and answer them with their content. So the opportunities are endless. I think um, repurposing, remixing, thanks to AI is now in everyone's reach. And uh, a lot. it's really just gonna come down to whether or not you're willing to put in the work to do it. When you look from creation to distribution, what are the things that you still think AI is pretty bad at? Yeah, so it's still bad at a lot of the things that we're talking about. Like it's that's where I think the human touch is still somewhat important, or at least to review what is going to go out on your behalf. Um, I think it's really, really struggling for long form content. And what I mean by long form content, I'm talking about um, video or audio. So video or audio content being listened to, consumed by the AI and then repackaged and repurposed is still quite difficult for the AI tools that I've seen to do. The solution that I've used and that I've seen work well is that you actually have to take sections of the content, um, get those to be saved in the database. And then once in the database, you use different sections of that content to create essentially the section, the, the pieces that you're going to then um, pull from. So you get it to take 30 minutes, upload, condense that down into like five minutes, 15 minutes worth of text, then use that for a handful of different posts. And then you do that same thing over and over again with different assets within it. So I think that's one of the biggest restrictions and limitations today is just the long form content when it comes to rich media, like podcasts or video. Um, and then tone is still something that a lot of brands that have launched AI tools are saying that they've figured out and that they've cracked but it's tough. It's really tough to crack tone um, because tone is something that in many organizations, especially if you go into the world of B2C, um, tone is more of something that you feel. And this sounds fluffy probably to a lot of people, but it's actually very much aligned and closely connected to whether or not the creative director within that company is in the right mood to say yes or no to the post. And that can be tough for um, a lot of marketers to hear, especially in the MarTech space, because they want to think, oh no, we cracked tone, we cracked voice. But at the end of the end of the day, sometimes it's just out of your control. Like it's actually more of a, a human game than an actual technology game. That makes sense. I, I want to come back to the video experiment that you did and get a little bit yeah. more technical on it. Would you mind cool. walk, just walk through, like you, you mentioned the tool runway. What was the whole process yep. like to actually set up 
a basically a deep yeah. fake video of yourself and have it actually yeah. turn out well. Yeah. So it was a weekend experiment. So essentially the first thing that I had to do um, was I wanted to figure out how I could replicate my voice. So I wanted my voice to show up somewhere. And that was where it kind of started. So I used a tool called DID. Um, and I don't know exactly what DID stands for, but if you go to Google and you type in D slash um, ID, um, it will show up. It's considered the number one choice for AI generated video platform, etc. So I went into there and I signed up for a free trial. It's like an avatar style program that you can use. Essentially, um, I uploaded a photo of myself with the background cropped. Once that was done, I was like, okay, now I need to figure out like what my voice would sound like and how I can actually tap into that. So I went off and I started to go into a variety of different Discord channels and Discord communities to try to find like, okay, where can I go to actually do this? And it turns out like there's a ton, a ton of different um, AI tools that are like focused on exclusively like voice generation. There's one called Murph. There's one called Speechify. Um, there's Resemble. There's a bunch of them that are out there. Um, the one that I found, I believe it's, let me see if I can figure out exactly what it was called. Um, it wasn't Runway. What was it? It was, I have to, I'm losing it. I think it might have been built within DID. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but essentially, I uploaded my voice and I had to upload like three hours worth of video content. Once I uploaded all of this content, I downloaded a bunch of my podcasts, etc. It essentially gave me a sample where it showed me like my voice. I could listen to it. I could test it, etc. I then downloaded my voice. I uploaded um, a, a blog post that I had written on why you shouldn't pursue excellence and why excellence isn't the only thing you should chase. I uploaded that script. I pasted in that script into the AI site. I downloaded an MP3 file. I uploaded it to DID. Once it was in DID, they mapped my voice and my lips and my blinking and facial recognition or something all together. And it was able to kind of recreate an avatar for myself. Then I uploaded it to Runway ML and I was like, all right, Runway, make me have cool backgrounds. And I think I said in, uh, in an office space and then it gave me an office space background, things like that. So that's what I've been toying with. What I want to be able to do, and this is getting really geeky, is push the limits of these things. And I think there's opportunities to just create a series of different assets on wide range of topics that you can upload to YouTube and just be able to generate a ton of views on different topics. Like the fact that I could replicate my voice to a point where if you weren't really paying attention and you were listening to a podcast, I would say with 95% confidence, unless you're like a deep Ross Simmons fan who have listened to everything I've ever created, you would think it was me. Um, and I think we're gonna go into a time where like authenticity is going to start being questioned because it's gonna be easy to actually replicate any creator who has footage and materials of themselves talking in the past. Um, it's going to be a very, very interesting time. I think, uh, I think it's going to be scary for a lot of people, but I wouldn't be surprised if you fast forward five years from now and you jump on a sales call with someone and you're not actually talking to that person. You're talking to an AI that already knows what to say after you say it, all based off of data that might've came out of one of the various sales listening tools, all of that stuff. So it's going to be, it's going to be a very, very fascinating time um, for sure. Just, just piggybacking off that last point. I know you put out a post like recently, uh, maybe, maybe it was today. I don't even know, but about the impact that this would have on B2B potentially the deep fake tech for, yeah. for videos. Yeah. Just briefly, yeah. like what, what do you think is the positive impact that this could have the different use cases it could take over? I think the positives are significant, really. Like at the end of the day, I'm a big believer in people should be able to spend time doing whatever they want to do. And if you're able to have AI take calls for you, if you're able to have AI do podcast interviews, if you are able to have AI run a webinar on your behalf, and it is exactly as you would do it and you wrote the script, then by all means, I have zero issues with that. And that then gives the person who's investing the time in AI to have more time to do their own thing and hang out with their friends, hang out with their partner, hang out with their kids. 
I have no issues with that. I think that's all net positive. Are there risks that come with this where other people could imitate you um, and do harm? 100%. There is definitely some serious fear to have around that. Um, but I think it's truly going to change everything. I think, like I said, in a few years from now, if somebody calls me up, if I see it's a sales call, I can have my AI take that call, know what to say, know how to say it, and then I'll get a transcription of the notes after they're done taking that call, um, and I'll be okay with it. Now, I did have a brain fart when it came to one of those tools that I was talking about in the last one. For the voice, it's called Eleven Labs. So Eleven Labs is the tool that I use to get my voice recreated, um, and I signed up for a premium account with them, and that's how I got the, the AI voice developed. Got it. Cool. Um, my last question here, and then, and then we'll cut things off. Just a general question. If you're thinking about tools you use every single day, whether it's yourself, probably, probably for foundation, that's where your MarTech usually goes, but what's in your tech stack that yep. if it went away tomorrow, you'd be devastated. Hmm. That's a great question. I'm, I'm going to have to say Canva, um, is the one that stands out. And then outside of that, I'd say, Ahrefs um, stands out as an SEO tool for research. Um, our team deeply uses Jasper across the board as well for content creation. Um, but I think for me, one of the other things that stands out to me is like Canva as a content creation tool is also very fascinating. Like you can go into AI today, ask for 20 different quotes, ask Canva to create 20 different quotes. You can literally run a, a script within Canva now called Bulk Create, and it will create all of these things for you in a matter of seconds. You can upload 20 different images from Midjourney. I think I'd also cry if I lost Midjourney. Midjourney is amazing. Um, and it can create all of the Instagram content that you want in a matter of seconds. Like, I really do think we're still early stages, and I hope that people who are listening to this, if you're a creator, if you're just figuring out like what to do, now is the time to experiment with these tools. It is truly a blue ocean. If I was 21 years old, just getting started in this industry again, every single day I'd be geeking out about this stuff, writing about it, creating things with it, um, diversifying my revenue by creating as many different media properties with it as possible, social media accounts with it. Like the opportunities today with these tools are endless and we're going to see some very, very cool projects come out of it. Um, my hope is that I can just launch a couple of them along the way as well. Uh, very, very last question for real. Is this really you or is this just a, an AI? You haven't been talking to Ross this entire time. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> the next one, it might be. So if we do this again in a few years, I have a feeling I might send a a Ross AI just to start the interview and then I'll jump in halfway through. So uh, remember this clip, we'll chop it and skew it in a few years and uh, we'll make that actually come true. That sounds good. I'll send mine too. So neither of us will actually know that this even happened the next time. <laughs> <laughs> I like, I like it. I'm down for